You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost with credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Today's episode features returning guest, Mark Konchinski. We discuss using credit to make money and generate spending, plus credit card miles and points with online gambling websites. We delve into online gambling welcome bonuses, deposit and playthrough bonuses, earning grocery and gas rewards, and how to easily maintain an ongoing edge of between 2 and 5% with online blackjack. This discussion is a more extensive follow-up to past blackjack episodes on my Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast YouTube channel. For examples of blackjack play and basic strategy, head to my YouTube blackjack playlist at Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast on YouTube following this episode. Before today's discussion, some quick show notes. I host monthly in-person meetups in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania with the group Greater Philadelphia Travel, Credit Miles and Points. Find more information at meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points. I'll also be speaking at the upcoming conference, ZorkFest, discussed in previous podcast episodes, which will include social events and sessions educating about miles, points, and gambling. Find more information at ZorkFest.com. That's Z-O-R-K-F-E-S-T dot com. Finally, I'm continuing to tinker with and improve my audio setup. Parts of this episode body have low audio, so I purchased a microphone preamp gain device I used for the intro and outro. The audio quality will improve for future episodes. Feel free to leave in the comments how the intros sound to you. Now, on with today's episode with special guest Mark Konchinski. All right, welcome back to the show, Mark, for your third appearance. All righty, thanks for having me. It's always good to be with you. The successes, the wins continue. Yes, and the new credit card coming in and the credit card offer achievements. and <laughs> It remains fun and profitable for sure. So today we're here to talk about blackjack and credit cards. I've released some YouTube videos about this. I've talked about blackjack in different groups. I'll be speaking about this topic in October of 2023 at the event ZorkFest in Lake Tahoe. Tickets still available. (laughs) So let's talk a little bit about it here and your experience as, oh, Justin, well, you already know the game. You're familiar with gambling. You're familiar with casinos, but I don't know anything about it. That's what people say. And I think that's what you said at one point. Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, I came from a very rudimentary knowledge of blackjack. I mean, I knew that the goal is 21, obviously. The, the idea of pausing on 13 when a dealer showing a six, things like that that you learn when you look at the apprentice uh, guide, the strategy guide. And, and for listeners, that's the blackjack apprenticeship yep. strategy chart. Yep. One one of a few out there, but I think it's the one that you recommend. So just, just learning like where you might want to watch the dealer bust as opposed to taking another hit in in a hope to get a higher score just you know cross your fingers and hope the dealership the uh, dealer black bus yes so 21 isn't always the goal as sometimes we just want the dealer to bust so you've memorized the chart you've practiced with some strategy trainer apps how did the practice with the apps go how was it learning basic strategy was it very difficult the, I didn't do too much of the practicing apps. I, I did download one and played around with it a little bit. But because you can so easily have Blackjack Apprenticeship chart up in front of you while you're gaming and no one cares or knows the difference, made it much easier just to kind of jump in with both feet. I initially started playing at a dollar a hand on an ongoing basis, which of course really kind of reinforces it with a lower cost of, of for each round. And then I went to $2 a hand just to kind of move it along a little faster. Now I'm reasonably comfortable playing at $5 a hand, occasionally $10. Uh, I know you play a higher per hand. Oh, yes. I'm doing multi-hand and $50 units at this point. I recommend to most people, yes, start small and build up yes. your betting over time. Because if you're only playing a dollar a hand, it's going to take a very, very long time to run something through like $1,500, $2,000 worth of play per session. Right. So I do play like five dollars a hand i'll play like three or five hands at a time depending on the game you know whichever each different gambling website seems to have different takes on multi-hand gambling all right well for episode number four hopefully we can get you up to that 25 dollars betting level to save yourself some time <laughs> i don't mind it, it does make it kind of something to do while because i have a, a multi-screen setup so i'll be playing a youtube video or or 
Netflix or something like that in the in the one screen and be gambling actively in the other screen. Ah, you've used your uh, Dell Dell credits yes. for some extra monitors <laughs> with the business platinum cards. The Dell or credits. You were on the Dell refurbished website yes. as a thing. Yes, that's not quite tied in with the platinum benefit that you're referring to. It is a separate website, but they do have some great deals, too. So what moved you from this? Because I've told you about lots of different things. I'm doing food reviews now. I'm using the website Fluz, F-L-U-Z. I'm doing some reselling on eBay, but you haven't picked up all those things. I, I don't imagine everyone is going to do everything out there, and people yeah. are doing more than I'm doing. But you picked up the blackjack. So what moved you from, oh, that sounds interesting, to, oh, I want to do that? When you're looking at somebody's credit card offer, that the really juicy, you know, offers out there. Uh, a lot of them have, you know, spending ten thousand, spending fifteen thousand in three months, and it, it it becomes more of a challenge. You have to find a way to, you know, make that happen because uh, your natural spending habits uh, are only going to get you so far. So you can prepay your electric, you can prepay your car insurance, and that's all well, fine, and good. You can, you know, buy you know uh, dinner for your coworkers, and then they can pay you in cash. That kind of thing, but it's only going to get you so far. Eventually, you're going to have to do something to make that bigger spend happen, um, unless you are running a business and then you know full full on business supports you and staff. Yeah, since you've picked up the blackjack, you've been running through sign up bonuses very quickly. Like, oh well, I already had the sign up bonus in like three weeks, and I really wasn't pushing it. <laughs> Has been right, the exactly. experience for you in many cases. Split tender to win, right? Split tender to win. Yeah. So, can you talk about that? So. One thing that I mentioned in the YouTube videos was purchasing certain prepaid cards to use on the gambling websites that were using credit to purchase these prepaid cards, playing the funds through one time and then withdrawing. So can you talk a little bit about the acquisition side of things? Uh, Staples specifically will have a fee-free MasterCard specials for $200 cards. So you can buy those and then run them to the various gaming sites. Um, and then there are cards that reward Office supply spending, uh, the Chase Inc. cash card is, is definitely one of them. Um, and it's also a good spot to kind of work through some other spend uh, to, by doing split tender on the various new cards for lower, to, lower amounts of money so that way you don't attract too much suspicion. So talk about that for listeners who might not be familiar with the term split tender. So basically when you're checking out, if you are specifically staples, allows you to buy eight of those $200 MasterCards in one transaction. So you'll just go to the register and they'll ring you out and they'll say, okay, your total is you know, $1,600 or it's going to be uh, $1,600 plus whatever else you're buying at the same time. And you'll mm -hmm. say, I want to do split tender. And then their very first question is going to be, okay, well, what do you want to put on the first card? And you'll tell them. Um, and they're usually pretty accommodating to do you know, two, maybe three cards. I wouldn't really want to do four cards because it comes kind of cumbersome uh, to people who might be waiting behind you in line um, or, you know, just, just getting weird looks from their cashiers. So, <laughs> you know, two, three cards. You should be able to get it, get it out, get it done. Cards, the newer sign-up bonuses, I usually suggest not to shove it in their face that if we're going to go somewhere like Staples and purchase these cards, maybe we'll do $299.74 on this brand new card and then we could use more seasoned card to get the rest of the spend. Right. So this is really helpful because I think if you were to get a brand new card and just throw it in their face and do 1600, 1600, 1600, okay. you're probably not going to get credit for the sign up bonus. But if you're able to split the transaction, this seems more like a so-called normal transaction. So far, I haven't had any issues with that of them saying, Oh, well this spend doesn't count. Right. And we're using different cards to space out these transactions instead of just doing the same card day in, day out. Like Lowe's, for instance, has the DraftKings card. Cards will have those at fee free. So that's a very good way. You can even do a uh, hundred dollar, do four $100 cards in one transaction. Um, I will typically, I don't know that, that you do this, but I will typically throw um, like an item I need, like, you know, some nails or screws or whatever that I need for the house anyway. It's, it's pretty easy to find something you need for those. I mean, plants and whatnot. And I'll go through self-checkout. And you are in and out of the store, uh, in some cases, like five minutes. Um, trick yeah. You know, with, with four $100 cards, uh, plus a bonus item, like an air freshener or something for your car or whatever. Um, and you're out the door and, you know, off to your next store or, next, or off home, whatever. Um, and you can be in and out in, like, 
five to seven minutes. Ooh, and sometimes the Lowe's is in the same parking lot as somewhere else, like Target, Staples, some other places that carry <laughs> carry these gift cards. It's a it's a great walk. If they don't have the DraftKings card at Lowe's, you can always get a four hundred dollar game on card, which has more possibilities where to use the card as opposed to just the DraftKings cards that can only be used at DraftKings. And then also, like you mentioned, uh, you can get the fee free. Uh, DraftKings cards in $25 or $50 varieties, no variable, there's fixed values, um, at Target. And I have personally, you know, checked out with uh, $350, I think was my my last time um, through self-checkout. And again, you are in the store, you are out of the store in like five to seven minutes. Yes. And you can also split transactions at self-checkout as well. Oh, I've not maybe tried that. Putting... 400 on one transaction one card you could just do two separate transactions because that 200 dollars yeah maybe a 200 hundred dollar transaction um looks a lot better you know i've done more season cards because i was i was doing it for that discover google or samsung pay or apple pay that the current the current quarter uh rewards those categories for discover it so i was just doing you know 350 dollars and a um, some I think a gift card I needed, I mean a personal card that I needed as well. So I just got that all one shot, made for an odd total. Yeah, great. A lot of options for acquisition. Weiss Markets, another one that sells DraftKings and Game On gift cards. So they've stepped up their rewards game. We're recording here in August of 2023, and now they're starting to give out more things other than eggs and bags. Yes, but the egg deal is always you know good. 18. 18- 18 count eggs. I think they were doing what, 2.99 when it, when eggs were like seven dollars a dozen. Uh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> they were still 2.99, which was still you know quite a good deal. I think right now they're probably 99 cents for 18 count, which is not terrible, yeah. but it's it's not a terrific you know offer. Um, and then also as we're finding a lack of good giant deals, we might actually be going to Weiss and saving at least a dollar. They they do cap you at a yeah. thousand point redemption for the gas points and 20 gallons of gas in one shot, not 25 like giant, but uh, <laughs> the, the war on happiness. Strikes right. <laughs> but at least they're consistent. It's very easy, you know, to, to with a, like a basically, you know, a very low risk situation to, to play through some blackjack to make those acquisitions happen at one X uh, at Weiss, play some blackjack, get some, some discounted gas and, you know, get on with your life rather than paying, uh, full price and low risk is a key thing here because when we're using basic strategy we're only giving up half percent to the house yes on most sites in most circumstances but on the acquisition side we're very often earning somewhere two to five percent sometimes even more on the acquisition side so we have a very consistent edge when we're using these sites and especially if you're betting something like five a hand ten a hand maybe 25 a hand I can't imagine the variance is going to be crippling to a point where people don't want to take on the risk. You, no matter what, there's going to be some risk. You can have some sessions where you're up, some sessions where you're down. But I, I don't imagine that at any point you were sitting there and like, oh, my gosh, I'm down six thousand yes. dollars and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you, you you haven't had that at all. I don't no, especially uh, you use a, a more advanced app to track your wins and losses than I do. Um, I have a very simple spreadsheet that I use. I just kind of put in the, the gaming site that I was playing on and then the amount of money I deposited, uh, what my return was the next column. So if I you know put in four hundred dollars, you know, two two hundred dollar cards, and I came out like four ten or I came out you know three eighty five or whatever, um, the next column calculates a percentage. Um, and then the next column is the day I deposited, and then another column will be the day I, re- I withdrew the money from the uh, account Um, and then it's total down the very bottom and i tend to hover around a hundred point you know seven um or ninety nine point two percent you know that kind of thing nice and that's not even counting the things on the acquisition side i think that would be a horrendous thing to track when i first got into the hobby i was trying to track everything and think oh how much am i making a month but that got really, really, really tedious. And yes. it's like, well, I got a seat upgrade. So does that count for 50 bucks or 100 bucks? Or, oh, I got a hotel room upgrade. How should I figure that into the spreadsheet? So, yeah, Along with I, the fact- I think even if we could break even on the face of it with the right. game, and we'll get into some site bonuses and free play and things like that later. 
But if we could break even on the face of it, but have a consistent edge of three to 5% and more, I'm more than happy to play ball. Yeah, I will include like if there's a site bonus, like where they say, you know, play through $500 and we'll give you a 10% boost, you know, for one X play through, like I'll calculate that in all day long. Um, but I, I really can't like make, like you said, do the math and figure, well, I'm getting Hilton points and then down the road, I got to figure out like how much the Hilton redemption was worth, which is a dollar. <laughs> Who has time for that kind of stuff? But yeah, the free, a, the free night certificate, you know, America loves math, right? Correct, how, correct. how are we going to quantify these things? Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty safe bet that, um, any card on its face is going to be worth, I just, just to make math easy in your head, I just say a, a 2% return even though you're doing like non-category spend on some of these cases just to make the, the sign up bonus happen. So essentially you're really only getting 1%, but I, I can't, I can't do all that math and stuff in my head. It's just not. Yeah. And that's definitely on the lower end. Like right. if you were to go in and use a city double cash or something similar to that, that just gives 2% and you're paying an activation fee of sorts, the edge isn't going to be dramatic there. But if you were to use 2% on a fee free card, and you're not getting anything back, you're up still about 1.5%. So maybe listeners would want to focus on the higher end where they're getting a category multiplier, they're getting some sort of rebate in gas points or grocery rewards, right. whatever happens to be the case. So it's up to you how much you want to do. Or the chasing cash card. Yeah, the 5X of Staples is definitely a big one. And as you mentioned, Discover It this quarter for 5X on Mobile Wallet is right. really nice. Absolutely. And maybe some gas station bonusing cards. You have the Wyndham Business, the American Express Business Gold as well. Uh, both of those. The return on spend on sign-up bonuses, that can, if you're thinking of it in a certain way of, oh, well, I spent $4,000 and got like 750 cash value or 500 cash value, that's a very high percentage, too, that some people can think of that as part of the return. Yes, 100%. Um, you know, you're getting you know, these Hilton bonuses. You're getting like you know, one or two free nights, depending on what, when you do the offer and what they're giving away at that point. But um, you can really you know, make out quite well and find some – I mean, there's like – we're, we're, you and I are both in the Northeast. In Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yes. yeah. So, For listeners, yeah. So we can go to like New York City and you can stay and like there's definitely hotels in New York City. They're $800 a night uh, over the weekend. So your your one night sign up bonus is worth 850 bucks. So it, it can work out quite well in that regard. Or you can maybe you go to Bora Bora and stay a night there as well as tying in some other nights at the same hotel yeah i've had some good stays in las vegas i've gone to hawaii i'll be going to alaska pretty soon september so yeah lots of options lots of ways to use those free night certificates so yeah it's definitely accelerating the spend as many people will think oh as you mentioned before i can only get one card every two or three months or sometimes people get a new card every six months but now you've just been firing a lot harder oh, it's, since getting into blackjack. It's crazy. I mean, when you think about it, you know, I'm spending like $900 in one day and then like $1,600 the next day. And then, you know, $500 a day after that. But then you're playing through through the funds on the different uh, gaming sites and cashing out right away. So I've already got the money back in my account before the bill comes. So you're not yeah. having to obviously play with your head. But you don't have to be worrying about floating money for months and months like you might if you were, you know, prepaying your insurance for your car uh, to a great extent just to make a minimum spend habit for a credit card sign up bonus. Yeah, and this is much better gambling this way rather than PayPaling money into the account or parking money in your account and never adding new money. Every time I'm playing, I'm adding new money. I'm playing through the new money 1x and then stopping and withdrawing right um, and then we have this clicker apps that that um there's a, a number of them that that basically you'll play those on like an old phone or a tablet or something like that so that way you can keep track of the number of hands that you're playing pick an amount of that each click that you make is going to be worth so if you are playing like five dollars a hand you're going to do like one click per five dollars that you've spent and that way you can calculate uh how many times that you've need to how many hands you need to play to satisfy the amount of money you spend because the gaming sites don't look kindly on you depositing like two hundred dollars playing through like maybe 120 of it and then wanting to cash out yeah it could definitely be adverse action yes. for not doing one x playthrough maybe people would get away f with it for some time or a few times 
but I'm in it for the long run. I'm not going to jeopardize my online accounts and get shut down due to partial play. I would think they have like a fair amount. Like if you're, if you did like, let's say $400 of, of deposits and you actually cashed out because you didn't count correctly at like 395, I don't think they're going to going to uh, come after you and complain. But if you were doing, you know, significant, you know, percentage was, was not actually played through because they are, I want to think they are paying some sort of fee for that transaction to happen for them. Credits from the MasterCard over to them, they need to pay the, the merchant. Yeah, so we're playing with our head. This is definitely a way to gamble better, for sure. Some people will just go in the casino, use their own cash. They don't necessarily have the chart or they don't know basic strategy. But here we're saying, look, you can play online. Just play through the funds once. Wire gift cards, prepaid cards with credit. Use those on the sites, and you're going to get a lot more out of this rather than just playing at a disadvantage. I'm only playing when I have an advantage. That's been my policy for years now. And this is why we're not doing roulette. We're not doing slots. It's because there's yep. a very mathematical formula as to what the next cards are going to be. Not so much card counting, um, because all of these different gaming sites, they'll even tell you in the, in the instructions that they're dealing with a six or eight or you know, possibly more uh, deck shoe and they're shuffling for each hand so even if you played all right, night long right. you're not going to see the same cards come up the, the odds are not going to be there to, to count them don't even bother and I'm, I'm not even a fan of the live dealer games because they're usually very slow yes. and it disconnects so i don't advise card counting in the online blackjack but if some listeners out there have any suggestions or some games that might be beatable <laughs> i'd be happy sure. to know it but for now i'm just uh playing through this like i was doing sports betting for a while i was doing the arbitrage betting using some software that would identify some line discrepancies so i'd place money on one side on one website another side on another website no matter what happened i would make a profit because there was disagreement about the lines but that party ended after a few months so that's what led me back to blackjack and blackjack has just been a very consistent thing the sites want to see the action they like taking the action on blackjack so it's been a pretty good ride so far and that's where the the apprentice guide for blackjack kind of comes into play because it takes a lot of the guesswork it takes like i want to say most of the guesswork out of what uh the proper play is because they've done you know mathematical formulas of, of games over and over and over again to figure out what the next move should be based on the cards that you're showing and what the dealer has and it, it's been pretty comfortable for you doing this over several months. You haven't had any bankroll threats or like significant downswings. And no. as we mentioned, we're using lines of credit. So we're getting that extra time to pay back. Even if we happen to say lose 100 or 200 in a session, it's, it's not going to be a problem. And we also have money behind from other things, not just lines of credit. You know, we're not LOL, let's gamble it all, <laughs> right? We're not, we're, not, <laughs> we're not doing that. And that's one of the reasons why I started that simple spreadsheet was just um, because you would have times. I mean, if you put through $500 and you're coming back with like, you know, 405, you're thinking, well, that really sucks. <laughs> but you look at, you look at the hold, you punch that number in the spreadsheet as the next line. And you're like, oh, well, my overall percentage for all of my games played through so far really only shifts because then you've got so many other good times when you're going ahead um, that the needle only moves like fractions of a percentage, not, you know, not a 5% swing because this particular round uh, did not go your way um, and you end up down. Because overall, you're even key. Yeah, it's about the long run. So yeah, in a short-term session, all kinds of things can happen. But once you put in volume, right. that you're putting in 100K, 200K, deeper than that, of course, you're going to regress to the mean, right? You're not the Over a long time, it's going to even out. Yes. So you're going to get closer to your expectation. And I think even above expectation because of many of the site bonuses, the free play. So what have you seen from site bonuses? People, I think, focus mostly on signing up. So when you signed up for some of these sites, what did you get for signing up, if you remember? So some of these, these sites have downright crazy offers. I'm, I know that we don't uh, like to play slots on on the long haul um but that because the odds are tilted towards the house's edge um there was an offer for wind creek it's still up, up right now where if you deposit uh for up to you don't have to do, do the full amount but they i can't see why you wouldn't do it but you deposit four hundred dollars they'll match your four hundred dollars you play through the whole amount one time and whatever you get you get um and i 
deposit four hundred dollars when I first signed up, and I end up they match it of course, and I end up at the end of it all the dust had settled and all the money had cleared and I was at eight oh five. So show me where else you can do something in an afternoon um, and make you know four hundred five dollars profit essentially. Yeah, and that's just from home too. Yeah. So this is much better than the older money order life that I was so accustomed to of going into stores, getting backed off by cashiers, getting, oh, let's see your ID, or you can't do that, blah, 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 long lines. Uh, I haven't been at Walmart in a while, so it's been really nice to do a lot of this from home, that's for sure, on your own time, at night, in the morning, whatever it happens to be. I don't know if you want to mention about the fact that the MasterCards are the ones that you would want to uh, head towards. Or, or if you're using them for gaming. Yeah, usually the MasterCards are some of the better cards to use. Cards like Secure Spend and Vanilla Visa might work on some of the sites. They often do, but not all. Or some of these cards you have to register, but not all the cards are registerable unless you're calling in the call center, and that's a lot more difficult and a lot more time. So, yeah, the usual MasterCards from Staples have been very good, and many other MasterCards are great. And, of course, the DraftKings gift cards are usable in DraftKings without registering in those multiple sites here in Pennsylvania. And even if people are outside of Pennsylvania and you just visit Pennsylvania, you're able to use these sites as long as you're geographically located in Pennsylvania when you're doing the betting. Right. And you can also do that when you've done that, when you've gone to New Jersey and things like that, where you live yeah. in Pennsylvania, but you've been in New Jersey and lo and behold, you can go through and play on cards on those accounts and have even more accounts going on with more. Yeah, I would do like a Staples World Tour at times where I'll stop at multiple Staples in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And then when I'm in my hotel room, you know, I, I like sharing in a group that we're in the, the gift cards sprawled out over the bed <laughs> after I stop at all these places on my world tour on the way to Atlantic City where I say like, oh, interesting. I think all the stops on my way are more profitable than the poker table. <laughs> it's, right. Although, yes, it is about the long run for sure. So yeah, it's it's been a pretty good ride. And at, at this point, I, I recommend people start with just one card and one site. And then after their first withdrawals are clearing to scale it up and do two, then three, and then four. I'm, I'm usually doing four cards per site every three days at this point if I have a good stash on me. Right. Otherwise, I don't want to hit much harder than that and have adverse action of too many payment methods. Because I know people that just start out they might ask you some verification things. Oh, can you show us your payment methods that you're using to verify? Have you dealt with that? Any of the verification issues, especially at the start? I went through that once with the verifications through DraftKings. I will say it's it's. I've never been audited, thank God, knock on wood. But I got to think it's along the lines of that, where they just kind of hold up your money and they just say, we're going to review things and you can send us all kinds of receipts and documentation and whatnot. And then you have to wait for them crossing your fingers are going to release the winnings and eventually they do yeah it's just like a verification that they're just making sure that you have the payment methods so with all these cards that i'm using i keep them in a big box so they're secure in case i need to go back and show to the website oh yes this is my card ending in like 4187 or whatever yeah yeah i, I like having a digital register of receipts just in case so when i go to places like staple and they say staples and they say would you like your receipt emailed or printed i usually go with the email so i can look back but so far, so good, not needing the actual receipts. I've just been able to show pictures of the cards. Yep, so you started on, I think it was DraftKings or FanDuel, which is more of like the mainstream sites, as some of the IT on the other sites is a little bit janky. Oh, you know that. Software is a little bit difficult to use. <laughs> we're, we're still waiting for the all of the releases for all the different updates they've done. Uh, but you, know that we used to, you and I used to joke about how uh, 1980s their interface was <laughs> for their website so but i think they've kind of stepped the game quite a bit i think they kind of have to because everybody else is doing the same thing so and i've advised being on all of the pennsylvania sites if you're a pennsylvanian or you're here often that way you can spread the action so that you're not depositing too many cards on one particular site and then the verification questions start coming in send us the picture of your cards this and that so spreading the action across multiple sites has been a, a good measure to keep it going. I mean, I'm on nine uh, gaming sites in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think you've done a few more than I have because I'm I'm not on Caesars, but I know you are. Yeah, now it's Tropicana oh. Online, Pennsylvania. Yep, I'm not on that one either. So, um, but I am on nine of them. It's, you know, it, it seems my like when you're just starting out, you think, oh well, two or three is a lot of sites, and it probably is. But like you said, by having nine sites. 
going to Staples over the course of the week and spending several thousand dollars on MasterCard, and then I want to play them through so that way they become you know liquid again back into my account, needed to kind of divide them up into different uh, gaming sites. We don't attract too much attention. Yes, and the site bonuses, as I mentioned, yes. are another reason to use lots of the sites is we'll receive bounce back emails from time to time. Deposit today and we'll give you a bonus $25, 1x playthrough. Yes. Now I say 1x playthrough because some of the offers are really lousy oh, where it's like 10x or 15x playthrough and blackjack only counts for 10 percent yes. so good luck getting that and then you do the math and you do and you're calculating a lot and you're like wait wait wait, wait. so the same bonus i want to do i've got to spend like thirty thousand dollars <laughs> no thanks i don't care how good the offer is. yeah and i don't think they'd be happy with that kind of volume just uploading 30k in cards in a day i mean you might just get blocked you would deposit let's say like five thousand dollars in, into one site to get the maximum response but then you're your playthrough only counts for like you know ten percent. So all of a sudden you do the math, and you need to play that same uh, you know five thousand dollars through like thirty thousand you know thirty thousand dollars of playthrough. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. So I always read the fine print oh, on the yes. offers. But Fan Fanduel has been very good, and they actually advertise on their site one x playthrough. We play fair. Yes. Is what they often say. The DraftKings bonuses are. Usually pretty clear the emails will say something like, oh, here are different tiers. And if you play 100, we'll give you $10. If you play 500, we'll give you maybe 50 or 25. It will just be very transparent about what's going on. But I, I must admit that some of these can be confusing. But I figure it as a free roll in that if I'm going to deposit cards and play anyway, well, hopefully I get the bonus. And then if I don't, then I just forfeit the bonus. Is that something you can often do? Just log in and forfeit the bonus. You don't lose any money. I mean, I know Unibet has done some different uh, deposit bonuses they do on Thursdays, uh, but it requires, I want to say 5X or 10X play. Or, no, that one's like ridiculous. Like they'll, they'll give you like 50% value, but you got to play through like 25 times or something like that. It's like, no. <laughs> I don't care. I don't want to play that many times. So they just yeah, you're giving up way too much at that. The risk to to lose money becomes into play too many times. Um, but you know, Bally uh, Casino and Wind Creek are both very fair too, um, as far as our sign up bonus, like their their playthrough bonuses. So they they've been pretty generous. Bally re reward uh, slot play, but it's a pretty decent percentage. So you have to kind of decide if it's worth blowing through a hundred dollars. $150 is is doing the math really and if we're using new money we're in a good situation but sometimes they would say things like okay $2,000 playthrough and this is your last day for the bonus right it's like yeah I could deposit for 500 cards and then I would have to play through that same money out of my own money so at that point I'm giving something up right. but then you have to figure out what the bonus is so if you just assume that half percent house edge on that additional money, then you'll have to do the math because America loves math and figure out how much that bonus might actually be worth. And interestingly, I, I had this crazy goal for the year to get MGM platinum status. As I mentioned this in a previous episode of the MGM MasterCard deep dive where MGM, bet MGM PA and the other MGM sites like Borgata Online New Jersey and bet MGM New Jersey, they were giving three times tier credits and comps for deposits using the credit card. So you can use the credit card to directly fund the site and not get charged a cash advance. So that was a very, very wild thing to do. <laughs> so I got a lot back on that for sure. And I got the platinum status. So for the rest of the year, I'm going to work on using some of those benefits as there's a complimentary cruise, a $600 flight credit, when going to Vegas, $200 dining comp or comps that you could just add to your account. And some other nice things like suite upgrades, skipping lines, priority reservations, other things like that, that could be valuable. So you can really do a lot with this, especially if you're a Vegas or Atlantic City regular, it can be pretty valuable getting the statuses and some of these other things that might come out of this proposition. Now, would that help you for those listeners who might be in different areas for like places like Reno, where they have other game yeah. places or um, aren't there some in Mississippi too? Oh, yeah, there's Beau Rivage in Mississippi. That's MGM property or in the Mississippi area anyway. Because you and I sure, talk about yeah. Vegas. And that. MGM National Harbor. Yeah. There are more opportunities for different people who might be in the southeast or southwest or whatever. 
Yeah, although the war on happiness strikes a bit down there because then they don't even have the online gambling in their state, as unfortunately only <laughs> certain states have the online gambling, and certain states only have the sports betting and not the casino side of it, not the table games, the video poker, whatever else on the casino side. So not everybody has access to all of this. So if you're in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Michigan, some of these other online gambling-friendly sites, this is just an incredible opportunity as long as this continues to last. Well, I know they're talking about expanding, you know, online gaming to more states. I think New York is talking about it as well. It is a nice little tax boom for the various uh, states. And we talked about getting the money out of the sites and getting paid. So how has that experience been for you? Have you had to wait a tremendous time to get paid? Have you had to actually go in the casino to get the money? How's that? Going? I have never gone to the casino. I know you went to the cage just recently to get to get money back. I've not done that before. I've gone to casinos, obviously, but I purposely, again, trying to de-risk, trying to look more like a, a normal, regular customer uh, or normal Western gaming person. I'll frequently let my, my money sit on the account. I'll, I'll deposit it. I'll play through it. And then I might let it sit there for 18 hours or, you know, not a, not a specific time, but just uh, to kind of brew or steep for a little bit like tea. Um, and then I'll take the money out. So I, I want to seem more like a regular Joe who deposited money, played through it. This is great. I won some money or I lost a little bit of money. Um, and, you know, some time goes by. And it's like, oh, I got to pay a bill or whatever. Let me go grab that money out of my my DraftKings account or whatever. Um, so I want to seem even more like a regular Joe. Yeah, it's a little bit more of note keeping, I think, and saying like, OK, the money on there is money I already played through. So you're not accidentally playing through it twice right. or you don't know what's going on. But if you keep good organization, yeah, you'll be all right with that. I've been depositing and then withdrawing right after the play. And it went pretty well for a while until one of the payment processors asked for verification and then the, the withdrawals weren't working. And I, I think what happened was I added a new bank account that I wanted to use and they didn't like that. So now, unfortunately, on some of these sites, I have to request paper check where I went to Casino Cage in one case, but I can still ACH out on several of the sites, but certain ones I can't use anymore. So maybe it was a lifetime achievement award. Yeah. Maybe it was a yeah. lot of deposits, withdrawals. I don't know, but I didn't get shut down, shut down site-wise. It was just the VIP preferred payment processor. So uh, the most annoying shutdown to date from VIP preferred, just having to wait a few more days to get paid. But as they say, the check's in the mail. Right. And so far, so good. Just taking a little bit longer. Yeah, it's really hard to know. Like we ask this question in the hobby a lot of like, what is the line? Like how much can we actually do before they get mad or before they want to ask a verification or engage in adverse action, whatever it is. But we often don't know what the line is. And even if a store will say like, oh, you can buy $1,600 in cards per visit. Sometimes the manager was saying, oh, now there's a weekly limit or they just make up stuff and claim that, oh, well, the ad says eight cards you can buy at Staples, but this store you can only buy yeah, my, my local staples initially, uh, I, I moved, people may not know this, but I, I moved from one area to another. So my, my staples ch uh, changed, my local staples. The, the new, quote unquote, new staples uh, would used to cap me, the manager would cap me at, at five $200 cards with $1,000, even though the ad clearly said uh, up to eight cards per day is perfectly simple. <laughs> uh, they would cap yeah, you at 1000 and, and you got to figure, especially your local one, that you're going to go there frequently. So you really don't want to have them groan when they see you when you're walking through the door um, because you are going to be there often enough that you get recognized. Um, so you, you try to live by their rules as long as you're not being too ridiculous. So I just would end up stepping up my amount of visits to make the, the amount of play or, or purchase I wanted to make. Um, it is what it is. Or try different staples. My, my old home staple, I should say, uh, had no problem uh, with eight cards in one shot, no problem at all. Yeah, and sometimes they could even let you do multiple transactions as long as they're cool with that. But I would suggest being more of a regular before requesting something like right. that. Or maybe bringing in another person with you and then having them swipe. Or doing like you do and doing a Staples World Tour where you have all of the local <laughs> yeah. Staples and you, you arrange them into a um, <laughs> multiple stops accumulating all kinds of cards yeah i try to make my travel efficient so if i'm going to atlantic city i can make a lot of stops on the way rather than just going directly and missing out on all that it's like i'm not going to go just one way to take a 20 minute detour and then go home that's not going to make sense but 
if I can get multiple stops in on the way from origin to destination, then that's going to be a really, really good way to go. And with some of this extra money on hand, what have you done with the extra money? Has that helped from a cash flow perspective? Well, you and I differ on that a bit because I will tend to pay the credit cards before they're due, um, just just so it doesn't get too crazy out of hand as far as how much I owe. Like you look at your your credit card statement and it's like, oh, you owe four thousand dollars. Well, you know, maybe if you paid uh, three thousand dollars of it, you know, along the way, and the and the final bill comes, it's only for like few hundred dollars. It may be less painful. So yeah, I'm definitely riding the credit roller coaster because I often let these statements close with the balance, but then I'm paying it off in full about a few days or a week before the payment is due. So my scores can tank, but then once I pay it off in a few weeks, then it rises because I'm not needing the score at that moment. Right. I'm waiting until I'm ready to apply for a card. So for me, I'm comfortable just doing that, letting the statements close. So it goes down, it goes back up. I peak usually in the high 700s for my scores, and then I'll apply for cards, let let statements close balance again, use the card. So it's been like this for a while. So of course, I'm not paying any interest. I'm not overspending. I'm just getting this money back through the sites. And I'm quite seasoned on these sites. So there haven't been many problems recently. Although I mentioned with the, the one payment processor, they were just uh, giving me a little bit of flack there. That was the most inconvenient shutdown. But maybe some listeners would want to ride the roller coaster like me. Maybe they want to put balances on 0% APR business cards, especially max those credit lines and have that extra money to maybe invest or get other bank account bonuses. Have you done some bank account bonuses where you've had to deposit money to get a bonus at the end of the rainbow? Um, I really have not. I mean, I did, I did a deal for Truist, but uh, I have not gone down that uh, rabbit hole of, of sign up bonuses like you have. Um, and it comes as a difference of, of how much free time do you have to pursue the hobby? There's no, it doesn't seem to be any right or wrong amount. Um, I don't do everything that you do, um, as far as like restaurant reviews and things like that, but, um, yep. that the hobby, like, I think anything you're doing, uh, big steps, little steps is still steps. There's, there's no, uh, right or wrong amount, how much work you put into it, how much you're looking to get back. Because I'm sure there's people that do yeah. even more than you do. Oh, absolutely. I mention that all the time. People get so intimidated when I tell them about some things. And I say, look, there are people doing more than me. And you don't have to do everything to have success in this hobby or with blackjack or really anything. There's always going to be someone doing more than you. So if you have some wins and focus on the bigger things, then that's what I would suggest to people starting out. That, okay, you can get the sign-up bonuses on these websites. You can deposit money when they're giving you bonuses for depositing some weeks with FanDuel, they were giving me $20 every day for like two weeks. Right. That was deposit 200, get 20 play 200, get 20. It's like, wow, I'll take an extra hundred dollars or so yeah, that, a week here. That period of FanDuel was crazy because you could deposit the money on one day, not to play through it. They give you like a 10% bonus. You're, you're putting in 200, you're going to get a 10% bonus. You get a free 20 bucks. And then like two days later, there'd be a, a bonus play where you play through $200 um, and they would give you a bonus of like 10 more percent. It was just nuts. So you didn't, wouldn't even need to play through the money the same day deposit. And you'd get like a double dip bonus. But of course, those days have kind of dried up. They don't do anything as close to that. But I still give action to all these sites. And sometimes I get the bounce back offers. And in the last week or two, I've been getting some through FanDuel. But today I logged in and there wasn't any kind of deposit bonus. So... RIP to that, I suppose. Another uh, tale in the war on happiness. But still a lot of winning, that's for sure, when using these high category earned credit cards, working on high spend goals, working on sign-up bonuses. It's really nice. And something relatively new I discovered was the checking account Juno, J-U-N-O, that's giving 5% APY in a checking account. So I've been moving money from the Blackjack Play into Juno to get that 5% APY. So that's been a really nice bonus as I have this extra money to work with in between making these credit card payments. The daily gaming too. So um, FanDuel and Bally, Wind Creek, uh, all have free daily spins that you can win, potentially win additional money uh, or, or casino play, I should say, um, at no charge at all, just by logging in and, and doing picking chips or spinning or whatever it is they were. Yeah, sometimes you can win an extra dollar, $5, sometimes even more in these 
games. Now you've compared with some others who are betting on sports and maybe you were getting a quarter where they were getting like a dollar, <laughs> but it's still something right. really easy that you're just logging in. It just takes a few button clicks. Yes. So why not add it to the, the daily, the daily, uh, task the daily task list right. here you know we're logging into the my vegas games we've talked about in a previous episode win slots all these all these little things but i think the little wins add up and i'm surely having a lot of fun with this that's for sure the, the all state rewards that are oh r.i.p all state rewards <laughs> august 1st 2023 we got the the email today, today. <laughs> for those that were in that game yeah we could do an anatomy of a dead deal episode oh, no. in the future on that one <laughs> To talk about things to look for in the future right yeah so yeah pretty good on on the site you, you've you been playing i guess at home mostly maybe on the weekends maybe on off days from work the nice thing about the online blackjack is you can play uh because we're, we are betting you know wisely we're we're you know relaxed we're not trying to chase dollars like you would be in slots um so you can play whenever you want so if if you are up at midnight and you're awake enough to, to play, you go right ahead. Um, if you only want to play a few hands while you're, you know, waiting in the doctor's office, you know, while you're waiting for your appointment, you can do that too. It's, it's not having to drive to a casino, you know, play. And now you're going to chase money because you're, you've driven and, you know, half an hour, an hour to get there. You're, you're out for the night or you've flown to Vegas and now you feel compelled to, to play through a bunch if you want to play like uh, through two hundred dollars in one night, and that's all you feel like playing through, no one's going to tell you didn't. You, you're, you're at home, end the game, and and uh, go about your day. And I'm mostly doing this on my desktop computer. I have a three monitor setup where I can put the strategy chart on one screen. I can put the game on the other screen, and use a third monitor for something else. And that's been really nice to do. I, I usually don't suggest people using the apps because there's more chance for user error. And you're just not as efficient. So I'm mostly doing it on desktop. Or if I'm in New Jersey, I'll take my laptop with me. Then you have a click counter, I'm guessing, going on. Yeah, the click counter you can put as a browser or you can use a mobile phone with the click counter app to keep track of your play for sure. Yes. And one thing that we want to make sure that everyone's aware of is the click counter is not actually counting your play. It's still rec You're just tapping on the screen a plus or a minus to let the app know that you're advancing the ticker by one five dollars or whatever amount of money you're betting uh the app itself does not know what you're doing with the click counter it yes if i were to play through two thousand and fifty dollar units i'll do two thousand divided by fifty for forty hopefully my math checks out there listeners and if i'm playing five hands at a time then i'll hit the button down to 35 and if i double or split then that's another unit because i'm putting more money on the right. table so I'm just keeping track and trying to play through exactly once. And sometimes it can get towards the end, say, okay, well, I have three units left. Well, I'm not going to play five hands. I'll just play one hand at a time. And you could even decrease your betting amount. So if I'm doing the $50 units with one unit left, I can do a 25 unit in case I have a double or a split. So it's up to you how you want to do it at the end. But you're just keeping track of your play. So what works for you is best as long as it's efficient i think but the click counter app has been very good yep. i guess like tally marks <laughs> on on a notebook uh, that might be tough yeah <laughs> um i've actually used tally mark if i didn't feel like grabbing the phone was in the room or whatever i've used tally marks it works just yeah and as an extra bonus we could talk a little bit about sports betting promotions we've done some interesting promotions especially on DraftKings, to play through our yes uh was it was it what one summer ago or two summers ago where they were doing the football crazy things about the betting on the underdogs with the spread by 10 or seven or the early win yes. token promotion. Can you talk to listeners about the early win promotion that DraftKings offered uh, one year ago or two years ago, but basically DraftKings specifically DraftKings had a promotion where you could bet one team or the other to be up by seven or 10 um, points. Yes. And then um, whether it was, if they were leading by that amount, then you would win automatically. Yes, on a money line yes, bet. Yes, hundred percent. So the 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 play became to bet the underdogs because the win percentage, the percentage of, of payback, was going to be better by betting the underdogs. I mean, certainly there were times when they were going to lose and you lost your money, but for the times that would win, the win return was a better percentage. So therefore, overall, it became a much better play. Bet the underdogs. 
and then make even more money. DraftKings even specifically said when they canceled the promotion, said there were <laughs> there were like I think four or five times if the either team got to seven or ten, whichever one side you bet, uh, got to seven or ten better than the opposing team, even if they lost the game, that they would pay out. So you would bet the underdog, but the better team ultimately won. Well, they end up paying both sides of the bet 100% of their. <laughs> yeah. they like, so they would be up by seven or 10, and then ultimately they end up losing the game by three, let's say. Um, well, then the, the people who bet money line bet um, would win as well um, as, as they bet for the, the more favored team. And all of a sudden, DraftKings is paying out both sides of the bet. They did like yeah, they they went to the media and said they lost money on the promotion yes. and they won't be running that again. Yes. <laughs> so it's a great opportunity. So indeed, there was a little bit of risk. Of course, we lost some of the bets, but ultimately, I think everyone in our group chat came up on that and i convinced some people to bet on sports who had never done it before i said like hey heidi uh former show guest heidi i said heidi you just got to trust me on this one <laughs> just just go down the list and bet all the underdogs and she was able to get down 200 on every game i was limited to 50 but she she made a killing that different week. folks were were a lot of different amounts of money um and i gotta be honest with you there were a couple times when i'm like i thought there's just no way that the this team is going to do well enough to get to seven or 10 because it wasn't a matter of just being up by three, for instance, they had to get like seven or 10 ahead. Um, and, and there were some of the, the teams like the, the Jackson Jag, but the Jaguars are really lousy, aren't they? There's no way the Jaguars are going to be up by seven or 10 or whatever the requirement was that given week against like the dolphins, which at the time were like a terrific team, um, in football. And it's just not going to happen. And so I, I, I bet, for the like in that case, I bet for the doll. Ah, oh. <laughs> but then you see, yeah, the upsets happen or the early leads happen. As you said, both some of the games went both ways yes. with the fluctuations. So yeah, we did see some interesting things happen in in that week. So yeah, we we've seen that there were some no vig coin toss props that were available during the playoffs. Where usually the sites are baking some sort of rake or vig into it. So you're not going to get 50, 50. Okay. Well, if I put down a hundred, I'm going to win 200. Usually you'd win something like 190. So it wasn't a great proposition if you're going to be giving up some edge there, but in the playoffs, we saw a lot of coin toss bets that were even money. And then also uh, was even going back a couple of years, wasn't there the, the no overtime? Oh, it was the the no yeah, shutout that's, that's bet it, that's was it. one of the props that they offered. Yes. So there there was a little risk, I must say, in the no shutout bets. As I got some text one morning and said, I hope you didn't bet on the Buccaneers to not get shut out because the Buccaneers did get shut out in one game right. <laughs> uh, when Tom Brady was the quarterback. Uh, but there were, there were some games where it's like two high scoring teams are playing one another or a really lousy team is playing a really good team. And we'd put some money down on the no shutout bets to liquidate some money through these sites. And sometimes there would be some bonuses attached to that or bounce back offers that would come after giving the action. So again, a little bit of risk, but probably low risk liquidation in many cases. Because you were going to say that, you know, a really good team was not going to be shut out by a really lousy team. Uh, that wouldn't happen that they might lose. I mean, like you said, upsets do happen, but you figure they at least get three of them. Right, at least a, at least a field yeah. goal there, yep. And to go back to the coin toss, there were some people who were betting on multiple sites. So there there were opportunities that some people might have done, um, just to say. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of creative ways to load this money, play through it one time, and withdraw with minimal risk or low risk or sometimes even no risk other than some crazy circumstances like the website just shuts down and you can't put in the other side of the bet. All right. And to wrap it up here, any advice you have for people who are getting started? Uh, start slow. Um, you know, it's it's definitely a, a marathon, not a sprint. There's no need to just to, to spend oodles of money all in one in one time. Um, if you have you know, two or three credit cards, considering a fourth, there's no need to go. And I wouldn't recommend um, applying for like five cards in a, in a one month period that would kind of. Yeah. Start small and build up as you're comfortable. Yep. And look for the better offers. Um, if you don't know what the good offers are, consult somebody who does. We're here to help. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. And our, our good friend, Dave Ramsey, we must end with that. We, we know that Dave Ramsey is anti-credit cards, <laughs> anti-credit. You shouldn't have a credit score. So I wonder what Dave Ramsey would think about using credit to fund gambling and get all the rewards. I'm sure he would say it's gambling. a terrible idea because, you know, he wants to poo-poo everything as far as that goes. And basically you should spend for cash and debit for everything. Um, and you should pay for every, uh, modest vacation that you take, you know, why, why put forth the spend on the credit cards you're only going to get in over your head. But he's, he's <laughs> speaking essentially to the, uh, the credit card equivalent of, of alcoholics. Um, so there, there's a certain clientele that probably benefits from what he has to say, but if you, um, are going about this wisely and, you know, being, uh, properly cautious but you know willing to try new things it can be a, a definitely a great way to uh, make some travel happen that you had not thought of uh, get some sign up bonuses some some perks uh, when you're traveling that you had not thought of before or earn additional cash back if you're looking for cash back yes i've said many times that people that can't be responsible with credit people that aren't organized this game probably isn't for them right. If you can't be responsible gambling, this definitely isn't going to be for you. But Dave Ramsey is never adding that if. Even some people who call into his show say, hey, Dave, I just pay my credit cards in full. I don't overspend. I embrace the frugal life that you talk about. He's still saying, oh, it's a waste of time. You're not going to get much on your rewards. You're not going to be able to use your rewards. And even if people say they're not overspending, he's still saying that they're going into debt. They're playing kissy face with the banks. The banks are evil. Right. All these blanket statements and a very dogmatic way to look at things. The banks are evil. Never deal with them at all, as I've said in a previous episode. Well, school. there are a lot of other areas of life where businesses don't engage in great practices. But should you just never buy a car because some dealerships do some shady things? Like, how far is it going to go with Dave? Right. Um, it, it will never stop because that is his brand. That is what he is known for. So he's going to continue to put down his responsible uh, listeners who can who could potentially handle credit. He's going to potentially uh, continually uh, belittle them on on the air. Yeah, always hollering at the callers, yeah. calling people dumb and stupid. Yeah, <laughs> that's his brand. Uh, that is his brand. Yeah. That, that's what he's known for. He might say the same thing about gambling and, oh, nobody really – makes money gambling no one can do that but we're here explaining the theory you can watch the youtube videos i've done on blackjack i have the blackjack playlist that's showing examples of basic strategy in practice and when you do the math about it you can see it's a very clear edge with the proper play yeah i'm sure dave rams would tell you about how the casinos that are, are in like city in vegas etc um how they're big and beautiful and you know marble floors and the whole month <laughs> and they're not made yep. on the backs of winners they're made on the back by the backs and uh, losers yeah definitely the case for many slot players roulette oh, players yeah. some of these other games where people are giving up a significant edge but we're doing it in a very careful manner here we've put in a lot of time to learn the basic strategy we reference the chart as we play should we be a little bit unsure about things so we're being calm about it. We're being measured. And this is a very deliberate approach. It's not just LOL. Let's just play blackjack and keep doubling our bets if we lose. And we can't possibly lose seven in a row, right? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Some people have those ideas. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the bet size gets really big and they hit the table maximums and it's game over. Yeah, or the, or the folks who are, are watching the roulette wheel when they report uh, what, what each pass the roulette wheel is. And it's like it's been red for like the past five in a row. It's it's gotta be black. It's gotta be black because it's been it's been <laughs> red for so long. Well, guess what? It can keep staying red. Uh, it might even be green, but it it definitely there's no probability. <laughs> the the roulette ball has no conscience of a uh, of probability to go from one side to the other. Yeah, the the gambler's fallacy that the independent events are affecting the future events here. Every spin of the wheel is random and all these blackjack hands are also random too. So there've been some dispiriting sessions, I must say, but there also have been some bountiful sessions <laughs> where it's like, "Oh wow, this is a big win." today and then other days is like oh wow I'm, I'm down like 300 and then another day oh i'm up 300 so yeah it's a little bit of the roller coaster of things but just stick with the numbers play through once as i suggested and you'll come out ahead if you're doing this in a proper manner right. all right any other closing thoughts here? i don't think so um it'll be interesting to see what the next you know 
batch of gaming sites is. It seems like in Pennsylvania anyway. Um, every time we turn around, there's another gaming site to <laughs> join up with. So wh- whoever wants to be the next next big thing. Yep, and more travel and credit cards to come for you. Uh, yes. So um, I do have a, a Hilton uh, night uh, planned uh, in the near future and then also um, a cruise plan for the fall. So, yeah, things are going well. All right, and the credit card wins continue to come in. You've been doing this for several years, and it's still a winning yes. game. 25 cards? 25? Really? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you have even more than I do, so, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I've canceled several, and I continue to get the offers, continue to get the approvals, so it doesn't just drop off after the beginning. And it's fun to get more people into this, meet new people through the hobby, learn some new tactics. Cool. So I continue to be engaged and continue to view this as significant income. Dave Ramsey said you can't be a millionaire through credit card rewards, but we're certainly working towards that, using other people's money to make money. And even if we're not going to become a millionaire solely on credit card rewards, it's certainly going to make for a better quality of life to help us make money, save money, and travel at low cost. All right, anything else? I think that's it. Yeah, I think we kind of covered covered it all on this topic all right and if listeners want to find you online on social media different places where can they find you facebook uh, we are also a greater philadelphia travel website that you've started um we're we're both on there along with uh, some of your other friends yes meetup.com slash philly miles and points for the in-person meetups in willow grove pennsylvania once a month yep and for me personally it's a bit far of a drive but um you kind of cater more towards the Philadelphia audience and I'm, I'm a bit more out uh, on the outskirts in Swoop County. So it's a bit further of a drive for me, but we'll get you back <laughs> occasionally. Exactly. Exactly. It's hard to make a month, especially for everyone's favorite Chinese restaurant in giants. In giants. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those who don't know yeah. that the, the menu, the takeaway menu uh, makes it look as if in giant is the name of the restaurant because of how large the print is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting giant. They have a community center upstairs, so we use that for private rooms. And then downstairs is a full-scale Chinese restaurant, all made-to-order food. I suggest that people don't order from the case all the food that's just sitting there. Just order something from the menu and have them make it fresh every time. So it's, it's a really interesting opportunity, especially using the grocery rewards to buy freshly prepared Chinese and food. And as a side benefit, there might be a good uh, gift card purchase uh, opportunity that week. At Giant, because it is a full-fledged Giant store, too. Yeah, we, we lost the mother of all deals that was 5X on the Game On gift cards as I was absolutely swimming in grocery rewards from that promo, so much so that I had just have stacks of printer paper in my storage room right. at home. Still going strong <laughs> with the printer paper. <laughs> lots of cliff bars, lots of laundry detergent. I, I think I've really thwarted the extreme couponers in many ways, outdoing them so, so many ways. Because you had more than enough gas points, for the listeners to understand, you had more than enough gas points that you could ever use, so you would convert them to grocery dollars, but then there's a limit to what just Justin can go through as far as perishable food items go, so he would actually go ahead and buy non-perishable things that they also sell at Giant, like lawn detergent or dishwasher soap or printer paper or whatever, because it doesn't spoil like cliff bars or have a very long shelf life. Um, but you can only buy someone's lettuce. It, it got to be quite the first world problem of what am I going to do with all these grocery <laughs> points? So maybe maybe we see a return to Game On and Giant, but they've stopped selling the cards. But maybe you listener, your local grocery store sells the sports betting gift cards and you can earn rewards on those transactions. It, it could be very interesting if your local store plays ball with that. And then you also ended up with all of the, um, the various uh, sporting teams um, – T-shirts and jackets and, and hats. And oh, yeah. That giant. I'm repping the um, Upper Moreland Golden <laughs> Bears. Um, they <laughs> they have some Penn State shirts at some of the Giants. Yes. I have a lot of Philadelphia Philly shirts. And people would come up to me and start talking as if I were a fan. And I tell them, oh, I just have this shirt because it's a local right, thing. Right, right. <laughs> people, I was on a cruise and said, oh, you, you went to that school? Oh, I went there. I graduated and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, oh no, no, I, no. I just have this because it's local. Right. <laughs> I just use my grocery There's dollars. different giants <laughs> for folks who aren't from the area. For different giants have different clothing, you know, in the store, usually by the freezer uh, section that like. T-shirts, hats, jackets uh, that represent that local school system 
uh, their, you know, golden bears or Vikings or whatever team they have in that area. Yep. All, all about the golden bears. Yes. <laughs> all right. Very good. Anything else? No, it's, there? it's always a lot of fun to talk to you about this. So there, there aren't that many. All right. Thir- third appearance. Yeah. Third appearance. We'll uh, get you on for a fourth in time. And one more time for listeners, if you can spell out your name so people can find you on social media. M-A-R-C. Uh, last name is Conscience. It's K O N. C H I N S K Y. And then I, I do sell cars. If you're interested in a Buick Cadillac or GMC uh, or used vehicle, hit me up if you're in the uh, Berks County area, Pennsylvania. All right. In Kutztown, more yes. specifically, yeah. the Kutztown area, more yep. specifically, yep. right? No longer Kutztown Auto. It's Miracle. now Miracle, Miracle Buick right? GMC Cadillac. All right. And, and you're in some of the promotional videos on their Facebook yes. page. Yes. Well. Uh, we actually have a professional videographer um, who comes out and shoots. Uh, you know, spots for us for YouTube, um, which I am always willing to act. I don't know what the right, right word is for it, but sure. There we go. There we go. <laughs> with with him. Um, some of the other guys kind of grumble about it, but I'm always happy to do it. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm in there. Like I remember one time I went into a store and they were asking me if I wanted to take a picture with Tony the Tiger because they were doing some Kellogg's promotion. It's like absolutely, <laughs> let's go. You 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 had to ask me. I was going right, to ask you. Right. This is great. <laughs> I have some fun. Yes. Uh, once in a while with the small yeah, you like to ham it up with uh, what is that that casino verse guy at, at wind creek oh thing? yeah casino verse wind yes. creek yeah the the baby yoda merch yes. is always fun so. yep <laughs> and you actually had a dealer what give you a free yoda oh yes i have a magnetic baby yoda that goes uh, on my shoulder from a dealer right i mean just because they- yeah a po- poker dealer thank you uh dewey there you go listening. hey dewey <laughs> so you just pick up for you all right to- yeah absolutely All right, thanks for coming Absolutely, thank you for having me. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for future episodes. Visit hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me, find me on social media, read select episode transcripts, and schedule a free consultation. Support the show through Subscribestar, referral links, and buying from my eBay store. Find this show on many podcast platforms and YouTube, where you can find bonus videos. Supporting me on Subscribestar will give you special perks, including a custom podcast episode, questions answered by upcoming guests, and monthly private one-on-one conversations, delving into more advanced topics I don't openly discuss at length in podcast episodes. Visit meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points to learn more about Greater Philadelphia Travel, Credit Miles and Points meetups I host in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. I hope to see you in person at a future event. Find a link in the show notes. I'll be speaking at the upcoming conference Zork Fest, which will include social events and sessions educating about miles, points, and gambling. Find more information at zorkfest.com. That's Z O R K F E S T.com. Listen to my other podcast, the Stoic Solutions Podcast, found at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. My podcast guests and I offer practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient tradition of Stoic philosophy from Greece and Rome. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.